okay good morning once again one and all so today we will understand the design of cotal joint now basically cotal joint is used to connect a two coaxial rods which are subjected to either ten axial or tensile compressive load S the condition is that the axis of rods to be joined should be collinear and there should not be any relative angular movement between the two rods for example let us take the rod a and let us take the rod b now if the axis of rod a and the axis of rod b are collinear with each other and there is no relative angular movement between the two rods a and b then with the help of a cotter joint we can connect the two rods okay now what are the applications for this now basically this cotter joint works on the principle of wedge action we will understand what is wedge action uh, you can also say that cotter joint is a wedge shaped piece made up of a steel plate okay and the joint is tightened and adjusted by the means of wedge action of the cotter what is wedge action of the cotter we'll understand in the next slide first of all let us understand what is the applications uh, cotter joint is used as a joint between the piston rod and the cross head of the steam engine then it can be used as a joint between the slide spindle and fork of the wall mechanism join between the piston rod and the tail or pump rod okay so these are the few applications where you can use this cotter joint which is also called as the socket and spigot cotter joint so basically this cotter joint consists of three components the first is spigot second one is cotter and third one is a socket right now this spigot is a part of a cotter joint which has a rectangular slot for passing the cotter through it so this cotter will pass through this okay then again it has a spigot collar or this spigot collar is used or you can say that this spigot has a spigot collar which rests against the socket end so this spigot collar will rest against this socket end when this spigot is inserted inside this socket right then socket is a another part which also has a rectangular slot for passing the cotter through it again it has a it again has a circular hole you can see here circular hole in which this spigot fits okay so now by and now we have understand that this cotter joint is passed inside the rectangular slot of the socket then this spigot is passed inside this circular hole of the socket then this cotter will pass through this rectangular slot of the socket as well as the rectangular slot of the what can i say spigot okay now this basically if you look at this properly at the figure of cotter joint or this cotter okay this cotter is tapered on this side okay now this cotter is a wedge shaped piece of a metal which actually connects the two parts which are non rotating okay and this cotter is when this cotter is fitted inside the slot and it remains in its position it does not move in its position because of the wedge action now you know what is wedge action uh, let us say this is a stem you can call this as a st stem of a tree okay so wood cutter normally use a tool called as a wedge okay which is narrow at the bottom as compared to the top in the thickness as well as the other dimension that is l b and t right so this wedge shape tool easily cuts the stem that is why it is used by the wood cutter so similarly here also this particular cotter joint okay which works on the cotter which works on the principle of a wedge action okay so this is also having a shape of a wedge and that is why this uh, tightens the joint properly with each other because of the wedge action we will understand more into the detail about it okay uh now basically again i have explained you that the cotter is tapered on one side okay now why this taper is provided see with the taper it is easy to remove the cotter and dismantle the joint so once you can remove the cotter okay you can dismantle the rod a and b secondly when cotter is inserted in the insert insert the inserted in the slot through spigot and socket and obviously it is placed by the hammer it becomes tight due to the wedge action as i said that the shape of the cotter 
the shape of this cutter is like a wedge tool used by the wood cutter okay so when this hammer sorry when this cutter is hammered inside this rectangular slots of spigot and the socket okay so due to the wedge action as it goes downward okay so it gets tightened okay so it ensures the tightness of the joint okay so this is the most you can say the advantage of the cotter pin or the cotter joint okay so this ensures the tightness of the joint in the operation and prevents the loosening of the part so because of this wedge action okay this particular cotter which works on the principle of wedge action ensures the tightness of the joint in the operation okay now basically this cotter is driven in or out using the hammer so this cotter pin is dismantled from the two socket as well as the spigot we are using a hammer okay and basically the value of taper which is provided on the cotter is 1 in 48 to 1 in 24 this is the range basically which is used for providing a taper to the cotter pin okay now you can see this particular picture that is the assembly of a cotter joint components so you can see that this is a socket okay which has been inserted inside this circular sorry this is a socket and this is a spigot so you can see that this sock spigot is inserted inside this socket as well as the cotter with the help of this cotter socket and spigot so basically these two rods a and to b are connected to each other with the help of this socket with the socket cotter and the spigot right i hope you have understand so the basic procedure is same as compared to the knuckle joint slightly changes will understand so advantages of cotter joint so it is simple to design and manufacture simple to assemble and dismantle and a very high tightening force due to the wedge action which prevents the loosening parts in the service this is the most important this most important advantage i can say because of the wedge action the wedge shape of the cotter pin okay it provides a very high tightening force means what this cotter tends to less loose loosen in the particular operating service okay now let us understand the fbd of the cotter joint okay so the fbd of the cotter joint is similar to the knuckle joint so now let us consider this rod a okay which is connected to the socket rod b which is connected to the spigot okay so spigot will get inserted inside this circular portion of the socket as well as this cotter will get inserted inside the rectangular slot of this spigot as well as the socket so in the particular picture you can see that this is the rectangular slot okay and this is the circular slot okay so now let us understand uh, now consider the rod a okay with a socket end the rod a is subjected to the horizontal force p to the left where is the force p acting to the left on the rod a which is connected to the socket now we know that sum of the all the horizontal forces acting on this rod a should be sum of all the horizontal forces acting on rod a should be equal to zero so there should be a force p to the right acting on the socket but this particular force p is divided into the two equal parts that is p by 2 and p by 2 at the two ends of the socket okay because this socket is having a hollow circular portion inside so this particular this particular which is called as a socket collar okay so upper end of the socket collar and lower end of the socket collar on both the ends this force oppose equal and opposite force p by 2 and p by 2 will be acting okay so this will balance the this will make the system equilibrium okay now again consider a rod b now i am considering a rod b so the rod b is connected to the spigot right so again the rod b is subjected to, to the force p where to the right side okay so as i said that again sum of all the horizontal forces acting on the rod a should be equal to the zero sorry rod b should be equal to the zero okay so what will happen there should be a force p to the left side on the spigot n okay so now you can see that this force p acting on the right side of the rod a and this p by 2 and p by 2 acting on the 
sorry this p is acting to the left side and p by 2 and p by 2 acting towards the right side on the rod a makes the system equilibrium similarly this p to the right and this p to the left on the spigot end connected to the rod b makes the system equilibrium now the forces shown on the cotter this is nothing but the cotter pin the forces shown on the cotter are equal and opposite reactions of forces acting on the spigot end of the rod b and the socket end of the rod a now socket end of the rod a means what these are nothing but the forces p by 2 p by 2 acting on the socket end of the rod so this p by 2 and p by 2 will oppose this p by 2 and this p okay the force which is acting on the spigot end towards the left which it will be opposite opposed by this force p which will act on the cotter joint cotter pin so again similar to the knuckle pin okay this cotter will get break into the three pieces right it will break into the three pieces again so obviously when it will get break in or you can say shear into the three pieces so this cotter pin will be subjected to the bending as well as the shear stresses so we have to design this cotter pin for the bending as well as the shear stresses in knuckle pin we have find out d here we'll understand what are the dimensions to be find out okay i hope you have understand the fbd now this is the basic figure which we'll be taking but i will use one simplified figure also so socket end force p spigot end force p okay now see where are the hollow portions the hollow portions are nothing but the weaker sections so here in the socket here there is a rectangular slot as well as again this is completely a hollow portion here there is a rectangular slot okay so the chances are there that at this particular points there can be a failure okay so we'll check for this also right so <coughs> so now i'll be using this figure okay to design the socket and spigot type cotter joint okay so now let us understand one by one this figure so first of all let us understand the notation so let us say p is equal to load on the joint or pulls acting on the load so each time i have to go back now so these are nothing but the p or the force acting okay then d is the diameter of the rod this is a let us say rod a which is connected to the socket rod b remember connected to the spigot so the two rods which are to be connected should have a diameter let us equal to d is it clear now d1 is the outer diameter of the socket what is d1 outer diameter of the socket first of all slowly and steadily let us understand the notation so outer diameter of the socket so what is the socket so this is a socket so this outer diameter okay outer diameter of the socket so what is outer diameter of the socket d1 okay so let us say this is the d1 that is the outer diameter of the socket okay let us say d2 is the diameter of spigot this is nothing but a spigot so let me call this outer diameter d2 now the diameter of this diameter d2 that is the diameter of this spigot will be equal to this inside diameter of the socket what is this again d2 because this d2 is inserted inside this socket so the diameter d2 and the diameter d2 i have considered the same that is the outside diameter of the spigot will be equal to the inside diameter of a socket is it clear so let me move back so i have considered this following notations so what is d t1 outer diameter of the socket what is d2 diameter of spigot that is outer diameter of the spigot because spigot is not a hollow uh, portion so it will not have a inside diameter but socket is a hollow so it will have a inside diameter so inside diameter of the socket and the diameter of the spigot is d2 now what is d3 outside diameter of the spigot collar let us move back which will help you to understand so this is nothing but the spigot okay so this spigot will have a slightly higher diameter as compared to this d2 so let us say d3 is the outside diameter of the spigot collar okay now the larger one let us say this is d4 so what is this d4 the outside diameter of a socket collar try to understand the notations okay so how many diameters i have defined the first diameter of rod d 
right then d1 outer diameter d1 is nothing but outer diameter of the socket then inside diameter of the socket is d2 outside diameter of the pigot is d2 d3 is nothing but the outside diameter of this pigot collar and d4 is nothing but the outside diameter of this socket collar is it clear now let us consider this thickness thickness of socket collar sorry uh not socket collar we will consider the this thickness the thickness of this pigot collar is t1 what is t1 the thickness of a pigot collar okay uh the thickness of the socket collar is not required in a design so t1 is nothing but the thickness of pigot collar okay now nextly uh so let us also give some notation to this okay so let us say i will give a notation c so what is c c is the thickness of socket collar so i am just assuming one notation uh to consider this thickness into the design so t1 is nothing but the thickness of socket collar c is the thickness of sorry c is the thickness of socket collar and t1 is the thickness of pigot collar i hope it is clear to all of you okay now the dimensions of a socket let us say that this is nothing but the b this is nothing but the l and let us say this is nothing but the t so what you can say l is the length of the quarter pin b is the width of the quarter pin and t is the thickness of the quarter pin so whenever you are designing this quarter pin for the bending and shear failure you have to decide the dimensions b t and l width thickness and length okay so these are nothing but all the final notations which we have considered for this design of the quarter joint i hope it is clear to all of you only one remains let us understand so a is nothing but the distance from the end of the slot to the end of the spigot so what is this distance from the end of the slot to the end of the spigot so again i have to move back to help you to understand so basically try to understand that when this spigot will be inserted inside this socket okay so let me draw a figure for help you to understand let us say this is a okay so let us this pigot is inserted somewhere here okay inserted somewhere here and let us say this is a slot okay now this slot let us say ends here this is a dotted line where the slot ends here and let us say this is the pigot end so what is c first a first of all distance from the end of the slot so this dotted line indicates a slot end and this dotted line indicates this pigot end so when uh or you can directly consider here also see this distance okay this distance is nothing but the a okay the distance between the end slot end and the pigot end the distance from the end of the slot to the pigot end i think this is more this will be more clear see this distance slot end okay so this is nothing but the clear so just for the revision i will revise once and move forward so d diameter of the rod will understand in the combine d1 outer diameter of the socket then d2 inside diameter of the socket or outside diameter of the pigot d3 outside diameter of the pigot collar d4 outside diameter of the socket collar t1 thickness of the pigot collar c thickness of the socket collar right b width length and t is nothing but the thickness of this quarter pin and this distance is nothing but the a is it clear so i hope it is clear to all of you so this diagram which you have to draw in your particular exam okay so this diagram is having a same notations what i have explained you right so let's move forward to the design point of view okay so let us understand uh, take one statement design a quarter joint to transmit the axial tensile load of 50 kN so now guys try to understand that there is no any much change in the design steps of the knuckle joint and the quarter joint and both the steps will remain same 
okay so let us start with this so first of all selection of material okay now basically rods are sub tensile rods okay the sorry the rods a and b are subjected to actual tensile load of 50 kilo newton so what is the strain criteria real strain is the selection criteria okay now cotter is again subjected to shear and bending stresses as i have explained you so strength is the selection criteria basically uh, what is strength of a joint the strength of a joint strength of a joint can be defined as a safe load that the joint can take up strength of a joint is the safe load that the joint can take or withstand okay uh, you can say that the failure of any component is a failure of joint itself so any component fails the joint will fail so these joints basically quarter joint knuckle joint are designed on the basis of strength what do you mean by the strength a safe load that a joint can take up okay uh, basically it is a i will explain you one general design principle in a, it is generally in gen it is general design principle to have the least strength of the component which is easier and cheaper to be replaced in the case of the failure means for example in this case if you take an example of a cotter socket and a spigot the cotter joint will be having a least strength as compared to the other two because if the component fails under certain circumstances it should not fail but if fails the cotter pin should fail and you can easily replace the cotter pin right uh, now whenever you are calculating the strength of the joint you have to consider some points what are those points uh, first is the load distribution and the action of load on the component of joint H how is the load distributed and what is the action of load on the components of the joint then type of stress induced stress distribution and again a stress concentration at critical section of the components then stiffness of the joint initial tightening of the joint okay so these are the some points which we consider normally in calculating the strength of the joint okay so i hope you have understand this what is exactly the strength of the joint so this i haven't explained you in the knuckle joint so i am explaining it today okay so it is uh, same for both because we are designing a knuckle joint as well as a quarter joint based on the strength of the joint only so what is the selection criteria strength so on the strength basis again as i have explained you pag 1.9 go to the pag 1.9 so select c30 for knuckle joint i have selected c35 so you can also go for a c30 that is a plain carbon steel so plain carbon steel is a ductile material so yield strength is the selection criteria so select c30 so for c30 as what is the failure criteria now yield strength so what you have to take syt for if you have selected a cast iron so you have taken sut right remember this ultimate tensile strength so 30 kgf so multiply by 10 300 newton per mm square so i am assuming that considering all the conditions and assumptions that this c30 having a yield strength as 300 newton per mm square is sufficient for a quarter joint to withstand a actual tensile load of 50 kilo newton okay so now we let us understand whether this design will be safe or not so again factor of safety as i said that this is a the quarter joint is subjected to a static loading that is a tensile and shear what is static loading the load does not changes in the direction as well as the magnitude as well as uh, normally we neglect the effect of shear concentration okay so <coughs> so that also we have to account so factor of safety as i said that for static loading that is model number two always we have to keep between this range for knuckle joint we have taken 1.5 so for factor of safety for quarter joint will slightly take as a two okay so i have increased a factor of safety uh, but also i have decreased the grade of the material also there so i am trying to optimize the design okay so you can also try with 1.5 factor of safety no issues okay so what is the step number three calculation of allowable permissible stresses now what is allowable stresses allowable stresses or the permissible stresses are nothing but a safe stresses or the design stresses above which your induced stresses should not exceed should not go okay so how do you calculate the allowable tensile strain the first is sigma t now basically if you consider the joint it is subjected to tensile compressive compressive means was crushing stress now what is crushing stress i have already explained you it is nothing but a localized stress 
so when the pin is knuckle pin was inserted inside the uh, particular uh, knuckle joint okay so there were the localis localized compressive stresses or crushing stresses generated similarly the crushing stresses here will be generated on the quarter pin when it is inserted inside the socket and spigot rectangular slot so we have to calculate allowable tensile stress uh, as well as allowable compressive or crushing stress so how we take we take it as a sigma c is equal to 1.5 to 2 sigma 2 now remember here that as compared to the knuckle pin as compared to the knuckle pin this quarter pin okay is slightly having a least strain as com if you compare the dimensions okay it's slightly a thin as compared to knuckle pin so basically this quarter pin the crushing stresses acting on the knuckle pin as are less as compared to the quarter pin right so that is why uh, to make a design shape i am taking sigma c is equal to twice of sigma t as compared to the knuckle joint that is i have taken 1.5 so the, you remember the change sigma c is equal to twice sigma t so what is sigma c now 300 newton per mm square and what is sigma t 150 so almost i have taken a double okay it is required because if you are taking 1.5 it may fail your design may fail okay so remember this In allowable shear stress based on the maximum shear stress theory what does the maximum shear stress theory says ssy means what yield strength in shear is equal to 0.5 times yield strength in tensile so what is tau allowable shear stress ssy upon fs what is ssy 0.5 syt remember this so i am getting tau is equal to 0.5 into 300 by 2 75 per newton per mm square is it clear i hope it is clear to all of you so this is a part three now part four design of rod design of rod means what so first of all we have considered the diameter what we have considered the diameter of rod a and rod b right we have considered the diameter of rod a and rod b as d okay so first of all let us design or let us find out or you can say design the dimensions of the D based on the stress analysis now you can see this is a rod okay uh, okay now the diameter D that is rod D of rod A as well as B both are same so we'll just find out once so let us consider this P code okay so when this P okay the load acting on the that is opposite pull opposite and equal pull which is acting on the spigot end or you can take socket end also doesn't matter okay so let us consider the assembly and let us say this side is acting p this side is acting p okay now i have already explained you that when the plane of the failure see the plane can you see this plane of the failure is perpendicular to this force the failure is always a tensile force so here it is more clear as compared to the knuckle joint this is a plane of the failure this is the direction of the force p and p now what will happen this because of this uh, you can say the f direction of the force is perpendicular to this plane of the failure the failure will be a tensile okay means what you can see that this rod will break let us say if this is the rod okay and acting p on both the side so here it will fail okay so this rod will break into two pieces okay because of the tensile pull or tensile stresses develop okay so obviously this rod is a circular cross section area so what will be the area resisting the tensile failure area resisting the tensile failure will be pi by 4 into d square okay so we by using this formula we can calculate the d so sigma t what is the allowable tensile state p upon a what is a pi by 4 into d square now we have to find out d in such a manner that the induced tensile stresses does not exceed this allowable tensile stress so what you will do take sigma t is equal to 150 p is nothing but the load what is load 15 to 10 to newton pi by 4 d square so d is equal to 20 by 60 you can take 21 also i am just making it a round figure 22 I mm ok so when you are selecting a diameter 22 mm the induced tensile strain will not will not exceed this allowable tensile strains and your rod will not fail due to the tensile stress it will not break into the two pieces is it clear okay 
so you can draw this a very simple basic failure diagram Try very very important point whenever you are designing this knuckle joint or any joint this failure diagrams you are not expected to draw the failure diagram in this three dimensional one ok you can draw a simple failure diagram but it is important how you can draw a simple failure diagram I will show you you can just take a rod like this and show your P you can show your P you can show the section where it will get failure due to the tension stresses ok and you can show the diameter D is it clear? ok so now let us consider the second the first component the spigot ok now we have designed the dimensions dimension for the rod that is a D now let us take the spigot now first of all identify the weaker section of the spigot I will just go back to help you to understand more what is the weaker section of the spigot the weaker section of the spigot is this one you can see this is the weaker section of the spigot now because of this force because of this force P okay which is acting okay there are chances that here at this section xx this spigot this spigot will get fail because here there is a stress concentration because here the material is removed here the slot is created okay so try to identify the weaker section and there you will get a failure so same thing I have done here if you look into this figure okay see here now you can see this is a plane of failure these are the plane of failures now you can see the direction of the force is perpendicular to this plane of the failure so failure is obviously a tensile failure so tensile failure of spigot means so basically you are designing these dimensions D2, D3, T1 and A so these all the four dimensions are what is D2? inside diameter of spigot right what is D3? outside diameter of the spigot collar this is D3 this is D2 then what is T1? thickness of the spigot collar right and what is A? A is nothing but this distance ok so you have to part 5 is nothing but the design of spigot means you have to find out the dimensions D2, D3, D1 and A is it ok? so let us find out now so where is the weaker section? this is the weaker section ok now first of all when you identify the weaker section and you understand that the plane of the failure is perpendicular to the direction of the force ok obviously the failure is a tensile failure now first of all identify the resisting area you can see this is the resisting area red color ok so this triangular portion you have to eliminate you have to eliminate this triangular portion now see here what is this diameter diameter of spigot what is the diameter of spigot D2 and what is this 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 is nothing but the thick this will be equal to T T is what here we are inserting a quarter and what is the thickness of quarter T so obviously this will be T ok so the dimensions of this rectangular hollow portion will be D2 into T why D2? D2 is nothing but this length ok total length or you can consider as a total height also is nothing but equal to the diameter D2 of a spig spigot and T is nothing but the thickness of quarter because the thick this rectangular slot will be having this you can say uh, width equal to the thickness of the quarter only because quarter is inserted inside it ok so you can see this is T into D2 now we have to find out the area how will you find out the area resisting area ok so resisting area means what this the whole circular cross sectional area minus the area of this rectangle so how will you find out pi by 4 into D2 square area of this circular cross section minus D2 into T because the you have to minus this rectangular slot na, where there is no any material it is a hollow portion ok so you can see here so area resisting the tension at the section xx where is the section xx this is the section xx here you can see section xx means what at this position ok so area reducing the tension at xs is equal to pi by 4 d2 square minus d2 so I hope you have understand how I have calculated the area reducing the tension at section xs so again sigma t is equal to p upon a so p upon area is pi by 4 d2 square minus d2 into t ok now we know p we know sigma t so we don't know d2 and here we are designing 
a speed code so we need to calculate d2 so but we don't know t so this t is found by the empirical relations okay thickness of the quarter is determined using a empirical relations so already i have explained you what are the empirical relations okay so what is empirical relation you have to remember this it is also given in the pag yeah i forgot to tell you pag 7.140 is used for the design of quarter joint and pag 1.739 is used for the design of knuckle joint remember this and PAG 1.9 is used to find out this. currently we are using only the 3 1.9, 7.139 and 7.140 is it clear? so T is equal to 0 0.31 D 0 0.31 times of diameter so 6.82 you can consider 7 mm but as I said that uh, I will just round it up and I will take it as a 8 mm ok doesn't matter so what is the thickness T of a quarter 8 mm ok so now from equation 1 put all these values in the equation one means what this p is equal to pi by 4 d2 square minus d2 that is the sigma t is equal to p upon this area na? so you put all the values and just you will get this equation put into the calci and you will get a d2 so what is a d we have get d we have get as a 22 mm so this d2 which is nothing but a diameter of a socket our so spigot outer diameter will be equal to 25 mm slightly greater than this ok so we are correct so this is how we are finding the first dimension d2 by using a stress analysis now this remaining we will find using a empirical relations ok I hope it is clear to all of you now there is one more failure called as a shear failure of the spigot now let us understand how there will be a shear failure of the spigot now you can see this force p you can take this side also so force p is acting here so as I said that this distance is a distance where the slot ends and the spigot ends is nothing but the a ok now this distance a portion if you take this distance a portion I will just ok what is shear force shear force means nothing but you are shearing some comp shearing some part ok so this part exactly this much part ok this much part if you see this much part right you can see this much part so because of this force P this much part uh, this will be A and this will be D2 so A multiplied by D2 means this rectangular part A multiplied by D2 this rectangular part I will draw here see this rectangular part A into D2 will shear off will come outside because of this force P ok now here the plane of the failure is parallel the plane of the failure is parallel to the direction of the force ok if let us say this is a force the plane of the failure will be parallel here ok in this case ok uh, I didn't got a diagram to show you here but understand that the plane is parallel ok so let's move on here here you will it will be more clear to you ok so what is the distance a what is this height d2 so this square or the rectangular having a into d2 as a dimension will come out will get shear off so there will be two areas resisting the shear filler this area and this side area so there will be a double shear here ok let me make it more clear you can see you can see this part ok so this portion a rectangular portion or you can see here also d2 into a this rectangular portion ok basically what happening this is a weaker section na, this slot this slot is a weaker section ok and here you have a a a small a into d2 portion a rectangular portion so that normally can come out due to the shear failure ok so we have to design the spigot for the shear failure as well also I hope you understand the tensile and the shear failure ok so tensile failure takes here at this weaker section shear failure will take place at this section ok so now area this is in the what will the area that is in the shear failure this rectangular d2 into a but now obviously there will be a two it will be subjected to a double shear this side and the opposite side like like a coin has a two sides this rectangle will have a two sides 
so what you, so how will you calculate the shear stress in the spigot 10 you know that tau is equal to p upon area will take 2 because this particular portion is subjected to the double shear and what is area a into d2 now from this we have to again assume some empirical relations so what are the empirical relations a is equal to c and what is a a is nothing but the same the distance from the end of the slot to the end of the spigot and what is c thickness of the socket collar okay so socket collar thickness is not required in this design but it will be required in the socket design but we are considering here so a and c we are considering as a 0.75 times of d so let us say it is 70 mm okay so wherever it is required i have put down the empirical relations okay so now calculate tau is equal to 15 to 10 is to 3 2 into 17 what is a a is a 17 and d2 we have already calculated so what is answer 58 so this 58.82 is nothing but the shear stress tau induced here in this particular area what is the shear stress induced tau the actual shear stress induced and what is allowable means the shear stress which is allowed which is safe is 75 newton per mm scale but what is the actual which is uh, inducing there 58.32 so it is less okay so you can say that the design is safe for the shear failure of the speaker speaker so I hope you have understand the design then crushing failure of the spigot now I will not go much into the deep into the crushing concept we have already explained that if you take a metal piece having a diameter D insert a chalk inside having a diameter D because of the localized compressive stresses acting at this curved surface of the chalk called as a sigma C that is a crushing stress this chalk since being a brittle material will get crushed okay now here similarly when the cotter is inserted inside this rectangular slot this is a rectangular slot na? rectangular slot of spigot so when this cotter is inserted inside the rectangular slot of the spigot what will happen the localized compressive stress or the crushing stress will be induced okay so now again let me move back to calculate the area somewhere okay now see so let us say this much this much portion of a quarter is inside okay this is a portion of the quarter which is inside the spigot okay so what will be this distance it will be d2 okay and what this what will be the thickness thickness will be t right the thickness will be t okay if you take a this figure so now we'll move back so let us understand so i'm calculating the area reducing the crushing failure okay area reducing the crushing failure so you can see this okay so this thickness you can see here the thickness of the quarter is nothing but the t so that t is nothing but a thickness and this d2 is nothing but this particular height or you can say that area so what I'm interested is that this area d2 into t okay this is the area where crushing failure is acting okay same like a knuckle joint okay so I hope it is clear to all of you so area resisting the crushing stress will be what this d2 height d2 is nothing but the diameter of the spigot because that portion on that portion will be only inserted inside the spigot the portion of a quarter which is inserted inside the spigot will be equal to the d2 that is the diameter of the spigot and what is the thickness of this quarter t okay so this d2 multiplied by t will be the area resisting the crushing stresses okay so what is this p upon a so sigma c is equal to 15 to 10 so divided by area is what d2 25 into thickness is 8 so 250 newton per mm square and what now i hope you have understand why i have taken sigma c is equal to twice of sigma t okay because see the crushing stress are high in these cases okay so what is allowable crushing stress 300 newton per mm square so you can say that the design is safe for the crushing failure of the spigot and finally the diameter of a spigot scholar d3 so empirical relation d3 is equal to 1.5 times d so d3 is equal to 33 mm okay and then the thickness of the spigot collar t1 is calculated again t1 is equal to 
4.5 times d i hope it is clear to all of you okay so in this way i have calculated all the calculated and designed using stress analysis as well as the empirical relation for the spigot as well as the rod okay now the last step is nothing but the design of socket and the design of cotter which we'll understand in the next lecture okay i hope you understand thank you so much